Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. It is Full Lid Friday. It is going to be a good one. It's packed. There's lots of stuff to talk about. Today I'm going to dive into the update on family vloggers and what in their world and the shit that they're doing. We're going to give out one free douche mom of the day and it's going to be, it's someone who's got won it before, so very deserving of it. We're going to dive into world news. We're going to talk about the OnlyFans, what's going on over there. We're going to talk about Taliban. I rarely talk about stuff like that, but it is such an insane story. We got to talk about it today. Then we're going to dive into advice on Reddit, and I've got another thread I want to read to you that's going to make you feel amazing. Like, because we got to feel that way today. I want to end today making you feel really good. So make sure you stick around to the end. Um, before we get to that, we obviously are going to do a little dancey dancing. Yeah, baby. Got my dad's sweater on. California g -fer. Okay. See if you can win a shirt today. Two shirts won yesterday. Like, that's huge deal. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's... Uh, I think it looks like a bracelet. Bracelet. Lame. Lame. All right. Let's go over to the Patreon. Yeah, baby. Gus's bone. Kimberly Murray. Come on, win something. Win something. Jeez. Keychain. Well, that sucks for you. Anyway, let's get to it. I don't know if it's just because I'm getting old. People have been complimenting my glasses lately and I just want to say thanks, but at the same time, I have to let you know. I don't know if it's because I got a new monitor or something, but I feel like I can't see as good as I used to see. And I used to have amazing vision, like more than perfect vision. And as I get older, it's starting to piss me off that my body's falling apart. So the reason I wear glasses is not because I think it's cool, although it is cool. It's because I'm actually I got to get my eyes checked and it's really difficult to get eye appointments and stuff during COVID. So I haven't even been maintaining it. I probably need a stronger prescription, but we're going to go to see the eye doctor this week and see how blind I am. But until then, I'm Mr. Magoo and I'm going to put these glasses on and we're going to do this video together. Now we're going to dive into the world of family vlogging exploitation of kids just because that's what we mainly do here. And I want to keep you guys updated. The other day we did a video on Piper Raquel and we, we called it the the exploitation of Piper Raquel. And I said that I've, some, I've been doing some research since then and there's a bunch of videos out there about Tiffany Raquel and that's who we really want to talk about. It's Tiffany Raquel's fault what's going on with Piper. She's the one exploiting her child. It's insane. And her big brother too, actually, now that we now that I've done more research. Her big brother is a big part of the exploitation. We wonder what kind of parent it takes to exploit their child to the degree where it doesn't matter what the world thinks. They have predators all over the place. And there's actually other videos of it that her like having a, a super fan come take videos of them and he's like a 50 year old guy it's the creepiest stuff that happens but i want to focus on one thing i want to wonder why you guys maybe might be able to tell me this too is why tiffany raquel isn't in jail because if this was a man that did what you're about to see here that guy would be out would be outed and that guy that man that adult 35 or 40 year old man who did this to a 17 year old girl. Here it is, uh, there's no audio unfortunately, but she's sitting next to this guy. Just so you guys are aware, this kid right here is 17 years old, okay? Which is a minor in I think almost every state. I think, I don't know if it's completely. Um, but th that's a minor in, as, far as, 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 as far as consent is concerned anyway. And what you're gonna see here in my take is there's no consent given about what's about to happen. That is Piper Raquel behind Tiffany there. And Piper Raquel in this video is about 11, if maybe younger. She's young. She's not an older. And so they're on this live thing, and this is what Tiffany Raquel does. She grabs him, so she's making out. That's a 17-year-old boy. Don't forget, okay? Piper Raquel grabs her face violently and pulls her off, okay? And then that's it. I mean, I know it's a very short video, but I want to show you how insane that is because not only, one, Piper Raquel clearly was upset, 
That's her mother making out with a 17-year-old boy, probably a boy she liked or whatever, okay? Tiffany does this, and I want you guys to ask yourself a question. If that was a 40-year-old man or 30-year-old man doing that to a 17-year-old girl on a live stream, what would happen? What would happen? Right? That guy would be outed. He would put in prison, everything else. Why is it that that woman got away with what she just did there? A kid who was 17 years old made, it looks like she grabbed his face and took that from him. That doesn't look like there was any consent whatsoever there. Okay. And then again, Piper Raquel pulling her face off because she's super upset. This is who Tiffany Raquel is. Tiffany Raquel is a predator and she's a groomer. So if you're wondering what kind of parent does that kind of thing, it's Tiffany who is okay with making it with a 17 year old boy live streamed. There is evidence of her breaking the law and she's not in jail and she should be in jail. Okay. So Tiffany Raquel, congratulations. Douche mom of the day. You know why you probably douche mom of the century as far as I'm concerned, but what you've done there again, this whole world with double standards pisses me off. I hate that you have to ask that question. What happens if it was a guy? Because you know, the world would explode. Why did she get away with that? I don't know, but she is definitely the douche mom of the day. Congratulations, Tiffany, you utter disgusting human being. All right, next family vlogger update is going to be on OK Baby. We've done a couple of videos about these two idiots. Um, she's got another podcast called Beneath the Sheets, and so at least they're trying to, you know, get outside of family vlogging, which again, it's a really, really terrible podcast. Don't listen to it. Where they get into like super graphic detail about like, Things like spitting and swallowing. It's like sex and saying that, and they look like they're teenagers. But the issue I have with that is that you already built your fan base off of young people who watch this. And then if you, if you start another podcast like Jess fam does, okay. Cause she's trying to be just like Jess fam. Like she's trying to, I, and this is why Jess fam such a douchebag because she inspires douchebags like this to be douchey. And so she started a podcast and it's really graphic. And the thing is that kids are going to follow her wherever she goes because they follow her on here and then do videos like that. That's not what this video is about today. This one is a is a Q and A that they do, and they they reveal something. They get asked a question: Do you think it's okay to use your family as content? Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we're doing one of my favorite styles of videos, which is a Q and A. I get to talk a lot, and Oscar gets to look awkward and listen to you. <laughs> I love listening to you. Oscar hates her, by the way. Your beautiful voice, so right. So hates her. <laughs> I can tell just because it's not that hard to to see. So let's just gonna, gonna scrub right over to that. To that, set, to that question. We're not building the basement. I was going to cost way too much to do like a job that in two years from now. Look at her face. <laughs> will cost us like way cheaper. That's when she hates him too. She hates listening to him talk. So we got excited about the RV. We started talking about it more like, oh, well, because yeah, we had RV? that amount of money set aside, mm -hmm. but we like, again, tax purposes, we don't want to have that at the mm -hmm. end of the year. So it's like, what do we want to spend our money in a smart way mm -hmm. on for the next? Are you asking the question? Do you ever feel guilty that your job is your family and filming your family? You should, but this is going to be very revealing. I have not even heard the answer. I'm very excited myself. For money. Unfortunately, the, that can happen negatively a lot on mm -hmm. the internet, and I understand where that comes from, and that's a whole topic for a, a whole series probably. Mm -hmm. But I do quickly want to say no. that is not the way that it is for us. It's not the way that we envision it. When we film, it's literally making memories. Oh, my God. Do they all have the same freaking like, do they have a textbook that's like, how to make shitty excuses as a family vlogger? Step one, make sure you tell everybody in the video that these are for making memories. How did all us other families in the world make memories without putting it on YouTube and exploiting our kids? That's a mystery. This is the, sh and you guys know that this is my pet peeve excuse. This is the shittiest excuse you can give for exploiting your kids. It is so stupid. And a lot of them are just like, well, we do it because we want that sick memory. No, you do it because you make tons and tons and tons of effing money. I hate this excuse. And then to now leave us at the age where he can watch the videos oh, yeah, and he them. loves them. They really do enjoy it. There has been times where our kids haven't enjoyed it. And we've been open about that with you guys. That's typically when we don't upload as much where there's certain times where we don't include some of the kids in the yeah. videos. Mm -hmm. And that's usually the times that they... They don't even verbally say they don't want to be, but we can kind of yeah, just tell. Yeah, it's called consent. And they can't give consent. Again, this is another... You guys need to... Oh, well, you know, if the kids don't want to be, we don't do it. And you know, great. Sure. But at the same time, you still do it. 
you still completely and utterly do it. And a lot of people's, a lot of family vloggers stands will say this exact phrase. Well, when the kids don't want to be on, they don't film them. Well, congratulations. You have some semblance of humanity. But at the same time, you still completely exploit your children. It's so stupid, this excuse. Oh, oh bad, like, yeah. Or, like, walk away while you're filming. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oops. We've always been good at kind of knowing. Body language. When people are answering questions like this that are hard, they don't look at the camera. They all do this. It's so amazing that they all are the exact same. When to film and when not to, and not even when it comes to our kids. No, there's been a few times where I'm like, ooh, like why? Like looking at it months later, I'm like, why yeah, like years later, that? there is some videos, but of, there's like, Levi as a baby where I'm like, ooh. Oh no, yeah, just like even more recently as like last year, I was just like, why did I film that? But in the moment, you just like. Uh, I guess this is a whole It's a whole talk. thing. But we also, this, I'm not just talking about our kids too. Um, and I don't know that you are either because you say family. When it comes to like, you know, your family or my family, we never record somebody who doesn't want to be filmed. No. And again, it's not even a verbal thing. Well, we can now feel. we don't. There was times in the past where we did. And that, and yeah, you did. You filmed your kid under distress quite a bit. A lot, actually. Quite a lot. You, they just told us, oh, we can kind of feel when they don't want to be on camera. Like when you hit your kid in the face with a drone, did you feel that energy? Was that not the energy? Or when they fell off the thing and the kid was kid's face was full of blood? What about that energy? You guys feel that? You guys are the biggest hypocrite liars ever. And stop talking about this shit because I... Uh, I, I only know two instances because I've only seen two videos. I'm sure there's a hundred other instances out there where anybody can watch your videos with kids and, and they can feel like, oh, those kids shouldn't have been on there. So you're lying. You're basically just lying and you're not looking at the camera and you guys are just trying to make up bullshit excuses because this conversation is happening and every family vlogger is feeling the heat from this. And you should be because you're disgusting. Not even in a malicious way. We were just like... like so intense. Yeah, and like we're just trying to show our story and like, yeah. look, look at that. And to us, it's a... It's, for me, I guess I should say, one of the biggest things I love about YouTube, which you do love this too, but this is like my, one of my main reasons. Do you imagine YouTube, being these people's friends? Connecting with you guys and like reading your comments um, and like building friendships and seeing your guys' reactions to how we edited or how. Oh my God. So here's what she's saying here. You know, the one thing we really love is like re interacting with you guys about our kids. So we're gonna put a video about our kids and we are using our kids to build fan bases so we can talk to you. And we love it when you guys interact, when we use our kids in the center who have no consent, who have no ability to consent in the center here. We love using them and then using that to build fan bases. That's what she just said there. You guys, don't miss this shit. This stuff is the real important stuff. We filmed or whatever. They're saying a quiet part out loud and they don't even know it because they're dumb as a bag of smashed apples. Ever. That's what I think of when I'm filming mm -hmm. is like those things. That's so true. I feel like we've never had a negative intention, which by negative we mean like we've never thought Oh my gosh, this is gonna make us so much money. Like, That's a lie. Straight up lie. Yes, or oh my gosh, this is gonna bring us like YouTube didn't even so make us views. money for the first yeah, exactly. year that we did it. I think that there's just like that big misconception. I totally get it. It's not a misconception. Like I said, there is situations like that on YouTube that have set that not serious. Yeah, you guys did that. Idiots. Type, mm -hmm. but kind of like connection with or, family or, channels. Yeah. But believe it or not, there is just families, and I know a few, like Jessica, her kids love to film, like. Just, she's talking about Jessica Scooby, Scooby Dooby. Loved it, they love it, do they love it? Okay, they love the money they get. They love that the fact that they can just run around free because their mom isn't momming them. They are just like free range chickens. Those kids just run around. Jess fam is always engrossed in her own life. She's hardly a parent. That's why they love it. Like, so much. I've seen it firsthand. And yeah. so believe it or not, there's families who like genuinely love filming. And even if it wasn't for YouTube, but they would be doing it. No, they wouldn't be. They Nobody would be. Nobody would film their life the way that you family vloggers film unless there's money into it. Who is filming a vlog for memories and putting like, hey, today we're talking about this. Who are you talking to if you're just filming memories? If this is about memories, why are you talking to the audience? If it's for memories, the audience doesn't matter. But you just admitted you do it for the audience. Wow. We are reaching levels of stupidity that I knew existed. And I think that... And if our kids ever said, came out and said, like, yo, we hate this... We don't this, like this? Yeah, we wouldn't. Take my I'm old sure videos you wouldn't. We definitely would. Uh, like, I'm dude, sure we you would. For our children. This is like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't understand how people think that we're just, like, out to use or exploit or whatever. Here, let me explain it to you there, young, young man. Because you do it. <laughs> I don't understand how people think that we do this to do it. Because you do it! 
You do it. That's why we think you do it because you do it. And you just talked about $50,000 basement and buying RVs and you buy trucks and you have four wheelers and you have all this shit. You have drones, you have everything. You spend your money like water. You guys are idiots. Okay. We know everybody can see right through that bullshit. Okay. You do it because this makes you money. That is the only reason when family vlogging falls apart and you guys are off the internet, what are you two going to do? You have no education. I'm not even sure they finished high school. They are, they have nothing to fall back on. And who suffers? The kids. Yeah. We've so. never had our kids scripted. We've never had them like, mm -hmm. especially like brand deals too. That's things that we're pretty strict yeah. about. Like we you don't script your brand deals. Okay. We all believe you there. Oh my God. This is a freaking, whoo, got my eye up on this video. These, we don't script our brand deals. You don't, they don't give you a script of what to say. I have brand deals. They tell you exactly what to say in those brand deals. You have a brand deal. ABC mouse for some reason has been using family vloggers to put their shit across. So make sure you guys know, don't ever, ever use ABC mouse because they use people like Jess fam. Okay, baby. Why are they using the stupid people? Hey, you want to learn your kids some shit? Get ABC mouse. Why would you want to learn from a parent who's a shitty parent what to do? ABC Mouse, you need to relax. You need to chill out on who you're using for your, your influencers because these parents are stupid. And maybe that's your angle. Hey, are your parents stupid? Get ABC Mouse so you can learn some shit. Maybe. I don't know. Because brain deals are, you are given not a script, but certain things that you oh, need goodness. to say. Um, we never have our kids say those things. We oh, are. you're so good then. You're okay. I'll walk away. Congratulations. You gotta be kidding me with this lady. Always say those things. Sometimes our kids are in the brain deals, but it's them doing whatever just, they just genuinely living, yeah. would do. Mm -hmm. It's not anything oh that's God. like, oh, do this or do that. And then yeah. I'll do it. Like, it's yeah. not. Yeah. It's never been like that. No, we've never had a negative intention with our children. We've never. Never. Used them to <laughs> use in any way. Like we never? Do, like, Are you kidding? Oh, so they do this. You gotta be shitting me right now. You got to be shitting me. You don't use your kids for views. You were literally biggest views of your kids getting hurt. That is exploitation under distress. Like this, uh, they, this is what people tell them. This is how family vloggers who will never, ever exit. These are people that will never exit the platform. Just fam, these types of families, they will never because they'll make excuses like this. We don't do that. When we can see with our own damn eyes that you do it, everybody can see it. How dumb can people actually be? It's mind blowing. Holy shit. This will get like so many views, views or yes. Yeah. But uh, I, I will say one mistake I did make is when, remember when they got injured like two days back to back? We have disagreements on this. Two like, days like, back to back. I fell off his bike and um, Sissy like stepped on a piece of glass or something. I got, so it wasn't even- Holy shit. Thing. I just- Those are two things I didn't even know about yet. I knew with the drone accident and the, and the playground accident. And now they're talking about kids stepping on glass. What type of parents are these? Like I get it, the accidents happen, but these kids get injured all the time because these parents are are vacant. That's why. For some reason, I get so wrapped up in the idea that like we gotta show. I, at least I used to. Now I feel like I'm like, <laughs> we gotta show these things because people are gonna wonder like what's wrong with their foot or what's wrong with his head and then like, his face. Why does he have? Yeah. he's never had a black eye, but like why does he have a black eye and then connect that with something else yeah, if exactly. you don't show what actually exactly. happened? So I used to like, okay. I used to have that mentality all the time, and I would always be like, what? if we don't address it, people are gonna ask about it. So I might as well just address it, and the best way to address it is. Show while it's happening. We always nurtured them. And we're always like, hey, you're good, you're good. We always made sure they were okay yeah. beforehand. Oh my God. The absolute hypocrisy and the, the double standards and lying that these people are going through is it's, it's mind blowing. Okay, so we film our videos for memories. Okay, well, let's, let's take that and let's just dissect that a little bit. If that's the case, you just told us you filmed the injuries because you know people are watching and they're going to assume things. That isn't memories, guys. You are scared that your fans are going to come at you because your kids have been injured and you share so much about your family that everybody knows when they have injuries, when they're hurt, they know it and they're going to comment on it because you live your life for these fans. You give your kids to these fans and then when the fan says, what happened here? Well, we didn't want to vlog it because this happened. Well, then I'll call CPS. You are now scared that when something happens because you vlog your entire life, that if you don't talk about it, that somebody's going to be mad at you about it. Are you guys hearing this shit? Oh my God. They're basically saying, we, you know, we have to film this thing because we don't want to show you how bad of parents we are and we have to prove that we weren't. 
But I don't like how we did bring out the camera. I feel like that was I think liars. Oscar that did does talk about this off camera to me that this is something. I mess. I just got lost in it. Like you kind of forget. Like I don't know. I think I just or like I realized. I I I understand my intention at the time. It wasn't bad at all. It was just like hey, like I said. We just gotta address it. Best way to address it is just like while it's happening. So that was it. That's all my thought process was. But I was still focused on helping out Levi. You know what I mean? You had the camera, or I was still focused on helping out Sissy first. And like I just threw the camera on the floor, or whatever. No, I do think stupid that, or whatever. Like looking back on it and seeing people's like, hey, that was not okay and stuff. I understand where they're coming from. Like, hey, maybe you're right. Sorry, camera died. But I I did realize where you guys were coming from, and I was kind of like, hey, maybe I shouldn't have yeah. done that. Like I could see how that came off. Wrong. Yeah, maybe like, shouldn't have. My intention, so. Multiple things. I do see where people come from because again, first of all, if you guys are and they, and they are truly admitting right here that they regret putting those videos up, are those videos still on the channel? Well, why don't we have a little? Did they take those videos down? Levi, I think is a kid's name. Yeah, scary accident in the park. Terrified. Poor Levi got stung. I lost my son. Levi's dental experience gone wrong. Teen mom. <laughs> I just typed in Levi, and half of them are him getting hurt. Holy shit! This is so bad. Hurt his feelings. My four-year-old can ride a dirt bike. Don't put a four-year-old on a dirt bike, everybody. He is not doing well. He bit me. Oh my god. Inexplicable rash is back. Sleep training. You guys are shitting me, right? That's just one name I typed in and all the videos are about them getting hurt or damaged or in some case. Yeah, you definitely regret it. Assholes. And unfortunately, that does happen. And so, how do you know when you're just watching a certain minutes in a day of somebody's yeah. video? How do you know what their real intentions were and if they would use their kid for reviews like that? Like, I get you do that. use your kids totally for views. You do. But being on the other side of it, being my kid's mom, being here physically when these things happen, I just know that's not what's happening. So oh, okay. If we take your word for it. Very frustrating to me that people even go there because I'm like. It's just so, it's actually not even frustrating. I, I don't even care. I, I don't you even don't care, really eh? pay attention to it oh, okay. because I think that it's so far fetched and such a reach that it is just silly to me. Like, we thanks. Again, I don't believe this person has grade 10 education. You don't, it doesn't, I, I love this too. Oh, we don't care, but we make videos about it. And I think it's so far fetched, so far fetched that we can see with our own eyes those videos ourselves. Why is it far fetched? That when you pick up a camera to film your kids' injuries or hospitals or rashes or whatever, why is that so far-fetched that we don't see that? That's the, the topic at hand is that you do that. Not that what happens behind the scenes. Maybe you do think they're okay. But that it's the fact that you do the thing, you idiots. Holy shit. <laughs> People are so dumb. You would never, I know our intentions. That's why I've never really oh, okay. cared to like super address this. I feel like this is the most we've ever addressed it. I know my intentions. And thank God, because you know why they're addressing it? Is because people are putting pressure on them. This is starting to happen. This conversation is happening. And the worst of the worst are getting a lot of the pressure and you love to see it because this is how we fix this. We shame these people. The government doesn't want to do anything to protect kids on YouTube at this point. And hopefully we can get that changed. But this is how we have to do this. Everybody says, oh, I don't like your methods, Josh. I don't like when you make fun of people. Well, you know what? It's effing working, okay? So unfortunately, that's the tools we have in our tool belt at this point. If I didn't have to do that, I probably wouldn't. Maybe, depends. But I'm saying, that's why we do it. So please, it's working, everybody. Take a look. With the kids, I know what happened. I was there, and I think that it's great that Oscar... Um, you're better than me in this way that you take what people say and you try to learn from it and you try to see their point of view where I'm just automatically like that was the dumbest thing I've seen all day <laughs> Like everything you said here Again when you live in this bubble of stupidity, that's all you know, right? She is she clearly and I'm not saying this to be Making fun of her. She is not intelligent. This person is is just not an intelligent person. And some people have intelligence, some people don't. That's not, again, I'm not making fun of her. But she comes across like she is intelligent and she's an influencer. That's the problem. She is very spacey. She's very not with it. She's the type of person that you can't be friends with, okay? She's the type of person in your friends group that's just like the dumb one, the dumb, who does dumb shit all the time, right? She's the daredevil, or she drinks too much, or she does crazy things, or she gets arrested and starts grinding on the cop. That's the type of person she is, okay? She is not smart in the normal sense of being smart. She's not intelligent at all. And again, I'm not making fun of her. That's just the reality of who she is. And she doesn't see that. And there is, don't get, because she can't. Don't get me wrong, there is things I wish we wouldn't have shown, but I'm thinking more like, 
when Levi were a babe in the crib five years ago, and you're thinking well, more like there that. There was like that one, like when we were, when Levi, well, this was a different time in YouTube. Like, Oh, I wanted to say that really quickly. That was the other thing I wanted to say. People need to understand that we started right. YouTube six years ago. It was a very different, different time. Place, yeah. You shared everything. What? Like you literally shared everything. But not detail. for like views. What? Or not for no, like cloud, for not, connection. Yeah, not for no, I'm not going to listen to them anymore. I can't, they're, they're saying the same shit over and over again. I get to other things. So what do you guys think of that freaking crazy video okay baby is an utter morons they're just they're just stupid i wasn't gonna talk about fathering autism but that's i'm just looking at it right now and i'm just scrubbing through it. it's a whole video and i'm gonna do that for monday fathering autism talks about consent and we all know that abigail can't give consent and i just i want to give you guys a little bit monday fathering autism it's gonna be fire so let's do that i want to move on because i don't want to get too too crazy long you guys like the long ones but i don't really like the long ones so what's going on in the um in the world news today, there's a couple things happening right now. One of them is that OnlyFans. You guys know kind of how I feel about OnlyFans. I like if you if you're wondering what my stance is on sex work. Okay, I feel like if you're a consenting adult and that is how you want to make your money and it's safe, I'm not going to shame you for that. I think that you got to do what you got to do. You know, use what the good Lord blessed you with. If that's how you want to make your money, I'm not going to judge you. I don't, you know, coming from a world of Christianity and where I came from a long time, even me just saying those words right now is a complete and utter 180 from what I used to believe. Okay. I actually believe that now as we're getting older and you, you're consenting and all that kind of stuff, you got to do what you got to do. Right. The world is going to see it differently though. Right. And at the same time, would I probably, be, you know, surround myself and have friends that do that as a work? Probably not. But at the same time, I still feel like it should be your choice and you shouldn't be judged for it. I just wouldn't hang out with you. One of the things that you're hearing on Twitter a lot, too, is that OnlyFans is dangerous for women because it actually tells women that you don't really need to do anything. You don't need to become anything more than just, you know, a commodity for dudes to buy on the Internet. And again, if that's your choice to do that, that's cool. But I think the danger to telling our daughters something like that to influence our kids to say, well, and I, I've heard a lot of teenagers on, on Twitter and stuff and on YouTube talk about how, like, when they turn 18, they can't wait to start their OnlyFans and make a ton of money. I wouldn't want my daughter to say, I can't wait. To, well, what are you going to do when you're turning 18? I'm going to be an OnlyFans actor. Or am I going to be a sex worker on the internet? No good parent wants that for their children. I'm sorry. And so that's, again, that's the, the, the issue is, is that we're making this such an acceptable thing where it's becoming like, yeah, do this. This is okay to do. But I would prefer people to do other things and not become a commodity for men, right? This, you talk about women's rights and all this stuff. This is, I know this is, a, it's, it's, it's a fine line between women, women's rights and women becoming like something you can buy. Right. If you guys don't see that, it's kind of weird. So that's kind of my take on OnlyFans. I just feel like we're influencing younger girls to do this and we shouldn't be. Danielle Cohn has a sort of an OnlyFans and she's as soon as she turns 18, you know, she's going to get into that work. And that's disgusting. And it's going to be really, really, really heartbreaking to see where her life ends up in 20 years. And it's going to be disgusting and it's going to be really sad. So that's my kind of take on OnlyFans. Again, where I get what I don't like OnlyFans is if you have children and we read a we read a Reddit post about a kid whose mom had an OnlyFans. Their stu their, this, per this person's, you know, other students found out about it in the school and then bullied this kid to the point where this kid wanted to commit suicide. Now, then I will always stand on this. I will always stand on this. If you are in sex work and have children and you're in public sex work, like where it's, you can be accessed on, accessed on the internet, then you're selfish. Hey, I'm not going to say you shouldn't have kids. People get all upset about that. I'm going to say that it's super selfish and we have lots and lots of proof for that. So that's where I stand on that. But so that brings me only fans. What's going on? They're taking away content. They're taking away explicit pornography off of their site. They're saying, if you, I don't know if you guys knew this, but only fans was never meant to be a pornography site. They, they started only fans to be like a Patreon, right? A place where you can get content. You could pay for it behind a paywall. And then it turned into sex, like a, a, a safe platform for sex workers. And so that was becoming a huge thing. I've there's people in my circle, like it's just, it, and it makes women a lot of money and they can do it safely. Right. So what happened though, was a lot of porn stars and stuff started taking over OnlyFans and doing explicit pornography. And so, and OnlyFans allowed it because it made them millions, if not billions of dollars. Right. And I think that there's something to be said for huge conglomerates like Pornhub and all those kind of things that are out there who might have been lobbying this to stop because that's taking away from their revenue. Right. And apparently the porn industry is like not something to be messed with. It's billions upon billions upon billions of dollars. OK. And there are, there are people who have vested interests in it that will 
lobby governments. That's how much money they have, okay? So the banking and the people that process payments through OnlyFans, who have the capacity to do so, told OnlyFans, we are going to stop processing payments or we're threatening, whatever the case may be. They said, if you don't take this explicit stuff off, we are not going to work with you anymore. And OnlyFans wants to go public, be a publicly traded company, and they want to raise, I don't know how that all works, but you basically have to raise a ton of money to become public and all the valuations and all this kind of stuff that make it so you can make a ton of money. So OnlyFans drops this thing. I'm not sure they're going to stick with it because they're getting a huge ton of backlash. But basically they said, okay, we're going to take off these explicit things that our processors and, and funders want us to take off. But it's still going to be a place where you can go find Trisha Paytas boobs if you want. I don't know if you want to, but if you want, you can get still nudes and things like that. But I think what they're talking about is the explicit pornography, like wangs and like literally porn, where you can pay them to do things on the camera. They're going to be taking that off. And the amount of outrage is absolutely insane because OnlyFans is still going to exist for women who want to give out lewds, who want to get naked. And even, I think even, I'm not sure, I'm not sure stripping's allowed on there, but again, it's the initial vanilla side of it is still going to be okay, but they're taking away the hardcore pornography side of it. Right. And plus I think they're trying to avoid lawsuits because all that, if you have an OnlyFans, just so you're aware, just so you're aware, if you type in OnlyFans leaked Reddit there, every person who has an OnlyFans, it's leaked on Reddit. You can find it anywhere for free. And so you, there are people who want to access that stuff and can for free. They don't have to pay you for it. So it's never going to be safe because it can be as soon as someone pays for that, the two ninety nine or 10 bucks, I don't know how much it costs, like 20 th depends on the person, I guess, depends on the content that you want to unlock, I guess. As soon as someone gets that, they can take that and put it on the Internet. So it's you're never safe. It's not a safe place for real if you really want to keep it locked away. Right. So that's kind of what's been going on. As usual, Twitter's usually pretty divided where there's a bunch of creators who are like, this is absolute, you're going to ruin my life and all that kind of stuff. And then the other half of Twitter where they're like, have memes about like OnlyFans girls in October. And there's like two people working at like Burger King or something like that. And I think my, my take in this as a dad, and again, that's a lot, the place where I usually come from as a dad is that I, and I want you to ask yourself this question, parents out there. Okay, for real, even the most liberal sex positive parents who are like, yeah, sex and talk about like, you know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? You know, you know, you know, you usually have a lot of leg hair um, and like armpit hair. But I want you to ask yourself the question as a parent, and this is only for the parents, not for people who are not parents. But if you have a daughter or a son, okay, and is one of the things you want for them to be an adult film star or to do sex work on the Internet? Is any parent out there say, yeah, this is something that is, uh, sure, if they want to do that, it's cool. Or would you say, if your kid came to you and said, I want to do this, what do you think? What would you tell them? I think most parents with a head on their shoulder would say, I would prefer you didn't, right? I think most parents who are even very liberal and very like open say, you know, I'd rather you didn't, but if you did, I'd still love you, right? That's going to say, but I think a lot of parents would say, I just prefer you didn't because I think that's just a bad place to be. No parent wants that for their children. So I, that's where I come from. If, if my daughter wants to be on OnlyFans, would that affect me? And yes, it would. I would be very, I would be very let down if that's what my kid strived to be. And the unfortunate part of the world we live in is that influencers are telling our kids that this is okay, and it's not okay. Strive to be something better, okay? And a lot of people say sex work is work, and I agree with you. Sex work is work, but it's not work that I would want my child to do. And I don't care. You can come at me all you want. I would not want my kid to do that. Cool. Cool. Let's move on to what's happening in Afghanistan. I usually, you guys know, I don't dip my toe in this type of stuff a lot, but I've been listening to this and I've, it has been like an insane journey for the last few days, but what's going on in the U S and Canada is involved in this too. So it's a lot of people are like, don't talk about Canada. Don't talk about us. Yeah, you can talk about whoever I want. You're not my real dad. Talk about whatever I want. Unfortunately, I know more about American politics. Than I know about anything else because I'm very interested in it. Canadian politics are lame, dude. Um, so this whole thing that's going on in the U.S., if you don't know what's going on in Afghanistan, then you've been living under a rock. But basically, Biden wants to pull out for a virtue signal September 11th release, right? He wants to say, by September 11th, 20-year anniversary, we're out of Afghanistan. And you know what? I sort of get that because I think for the most part, Canadians, and, and we are your allies, and we have, and Canadians do go to Afghanistan as well. So we, when you pull out, your allies pull out, and we are your ally, right? So we're all part of this together. We are there with you, and we pulled out with you, right? So what happens is, Everybody wants Afghanistan to go back to being who they want without military, you know, intervention. And that is an agreed upon thing. 
you know, Trump started that, I think, uh, I think even Obama in Obama era was started to like, let's get them out. Let's get them out. It's been like t- a decade since um, Osama bin Laden was killed and they wanted to get out since then, right? In the meantime, they've been just like training and using and you giving them air support, holding the Taliban at bay, which has been the only linchpin holding the Taliban at, the, the Taliban at bay was been the American and, and, and allied military sitting there helping, okay? So Biden in his infinite wisdom, and guys, I know that you, this is a political statement, um, but as I watch as a Canadian might be interesting to hear this from an outside source who has no skin in the game, really, uh, most people believe that Biden is not all there. Most people believe that. And some people will say, no, he's all, there. and maybe he is. But from what most people see, this guy is half there. He's 78 years old. Okay. He absolutely is showing signs, not saying has showing signs of early onset dementia. Okay. I don't know if it's early, but it's, he's. Showing signs of that. we Most people believe that Biden is run by his administration. He is a Manchurian candidate. If you don't know what that is, it means that they are a suit that is told what to do. Okay, I'm not sure that's the case, but that's kind of what people see. Now, um, is he better than Trump? I mean, in a lot of aspects, he really is. It's, it's more of a... It's more of a at least it's not, you know, insane 24-hour news cycles of insaneness, right? So he's a little bit more tame as far as that's concerned, and his politics are a little bit more tame. So it is a hit and miss kind of thing. With But at the same time, you're also getting something like this. When it's a virtue signal opportunity, he'll take it, right? So, But here's what backfired. So, so Biden pulls out the, the, pulls the military, just pulls him. And the, the shit falls apart in like, what, three days? Like Kabul falls in within three days or something like that. And so now they've got this ring around the airport. They're trying to get 80 to 100,000 people out who deserve to get out, who are like allied to the Americans. And that means that people who are in Afghanistan who are helping the, mil- the U.S. military, they need to get out because they're going to be killed. That's the truth of it. The Taliban are, going to, are a very fundamentalist sect of Islam. And they run under Sharia law. And they believe that if you are an infidel, meaning someone that has gone against Muhammad or their god, Right. You deserve to be killed. And that's biblical for them. Like that's that's not like they don't they think that's. Yeah. Cool. And so they are going to do that. Sharia law allow, doesn't allow for women's rights. It doesn't allow for women to go to school. You have to be you can't drive. There's no decision. You're basically anyway, it's it's an insane regime, but it's that's the way it is over there. Right. So Biden does this. It falls. The whole world explodes. What the hell did you do? What'd you do? So now they're running in circles trying to figure this all out. And what Biden did when he came out and did his address, and this is what got me. I, I, I heard the whole thing. He said, you know what? There's so many people who want us to stay there forever. And, da, da, da. and we can argue about that all day long that you can, you, you can give support to your allies and stay there, right? You can argue that. But he wanted every single troop out as a virtue signal, not to just whatever. And it fell, right? But the argument wasn't why he did it. The argument was how he did it because everybody agrees I mean, I think 70% is what the polls show that the one of the troops out of Afghanistan, most people will agree on that. Okay. The majority do, including myself, right? There shouldn't be fighting wars that aren't really ours. Okay. But at the same time, the argument was how you did it and all these people that you left stranded, that was the big issue. Okay. And so, but they, they are, they, they don't talk about that. The media doesn't talk about the, how, like, I mean, the, the right side media talks about it a lot because that's the one question. Like nobody's questioning why you did it. We're questioning how you did it. And so when it comes to what happened there, this is a huge, huge, huge deal, which is why I'm even talking about it. It's an incredibly important thing that's going on. And the fact that we're leaving so many people at the hands of a Taliban, of the hands of a regime that is very fundamentalist in its violence as well, is really scary. You guys are not going to see the end of this. There's going to be some stories and there's already been, as soon as you see kids in the street with blood on their faces or dead kids, it, it, it hits home and it's really real. And eventually you're going to have to, the U S Canada and all the allies are going to have to go back in and do this whole thing again. That's what's going to happen. So, I mean, that's my take on it as a dad, as a person who did not serve in the military, who, who understands how many people lost their lives over there. This is a really, really, really important thing. You got to keep your eyes on and watch what happens now. When you allow governments to virtue signal, 
this is what really, this is what happens because you're not doing it for the right reasons. So now instead of celebrating getting out in the 20 year anniversary, say we did our job, we killed Osama bin Laden, we fixed the thing from from 9-11, all that stuff was like, we did the thing and now we, all our troops are home, let's have a big celebration. Now the 20 year anniversary is gonna be marked with the Taliban taking over the country that you tried to fix. That's what happened now. Your government in the US is collapsing. It's absolutely insane. What did I get wrong about that? I don't know. You guys can, I'm sure you'll call me out on that. But I feel like this is a huge story. And as an ally to the U.S., our troops are there too. And it affects us as well. So that's what's going on there. All right, let's get, uh, I want to I end it today off on a feel-good Reddit adventure. Long, full it Friday, but you love them. You love them. So I love to go and ask Reddit. There's a bunch of great questions on Ask Reddit. There's always something like, oh, I would have loved to ask that question. But here's the question. And I want, this is going to make you guys feel good because we're going to go through the best answers. What is a weird thing about the opposite sex that you find strangely attractive? And I'm going to ask you guys this question as well. And leave a comment below or leave it in the chat. Um, what is a weird thing that you find attractive? For me, I'm going to go through these and I'm going to tell you what I find weirdly attractive about women, okay? And I think you guys are going to be quite surprised. But let's go through it. And there's some hilarious ones here. Um, a girl with ears that poke out a bit. I'm not talking Dumbo. Just a bit... No, bit more than normal, you know, just a little bit. And I think that's kind of cute. I think this one might've been from Love Meg because the name is Mega Stalitz. I find myself attracted to men with very defined full eyebrows in general, just angular features, but eyebrows that stick out. So this is definitely Love Meg's husband. You found your man and then they post this picture. <laughs> that's awesome. This person says, uh, Woot45 says, I tend to find people more attractive when they look disheveled. If a guy that usually has perfect hair one day has messy, effed up bedhead, it's extremely hot. Same for guys, like a girl who comes out all pimped out all the time, all the time, and you see the girl that takes care of her, so you know the kind of girl I'm talking about, like, you know the kind of girl I'm talking about is that always done up, but then one day she just like is wearing sweats with her hair up and you're like, oh man, I see that, absolutely see that. Women who drive shitty cars. <laughs> I think that's kind of cute. That's cute. It's true. I don't like. Have you ever seen a woman driving like a pimped out Mercedes or something? Like, oh yeah. That's... But you see a girl like pull up in like a you know a Geo from 1992. You're like, oh, that's cute. I don't know if this is considered weird. Stoutcast Stouticus says, but I've always thought girls look incredibly attractive when they're sweaty and dirty. No, no thanks. Well, I don't know. Like, as in far hardworking farm girls? Yeah, as in roughing it, camping, gun shooting girls. Okay, whatever. This <laughs> Cheese Danish 93 writes this, and this is my spirit animal. That tired and aggravated sigh a guy makes when he sits down on the couch after a long day. Like, the world sucks, and at least they have television to watch and Doritos. <laughs> and this is exactly how it goes. Ready? This is, I'll, I'll show you. If you guys are wondering what that sounds like, this is it, because I've done it. <sighs> Man. <sighs> That's it. Just saying. Uh, Brodell writes, ponytails. Girls do so much stuff to their hair, and really just throwing it up in a ponytail so I can see the nape of the neck is drool-worthy. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. And then uh, I love this, because people write this and says, I love, the I have those. Thanks for letting me not feel insecure about them this one time. And you know what? This is cool about these like weird things that people think. they You don't know this, everybody, and maybe you do, but there is somebody out there who has a massive effing crush on you and you have no idea or did or whatever in school. You didn't know it, but somebody does. If you're married, somebody still does. Hey, somebody has a crush on you. <laughs> Gladius writes, as an ugly person, I love this thread. <laughs> big teeth and a big forehead, possibly slightly cross-eyed. Yes, I realize this makes me sound like I'm a disabled horse butter, <laughs> but in the right proportions. Uh, so attractive. This person loves a sarcastic girl. Agreed. Oh, agreed. My wife is not good at sarcasm. Like, I don't, I don't, holy shit, I'm starting to realize, I don't, is my wife sarcastic at all? Holy shit, I don't think my wife has ever, ever, ever done sarcasm. This one says, dark circles underneath their eyes, a big, and big regal noses. I also tend to, f I also tend to find plain looking women more attractive. Well, wow, there you go. Dark circles? I'm always so self conscious about nose so when I see this type of stuff. Men with larger or interesting noses. Immensely handsome. Bit of facial hair to go with it and perfection. Edit. Some examples are Adrian Brody, Jason Schwartzman, and Nigel Thornberry. Is my nose big? I find my nose onward looks bigger. That's the native nose. That's my mom has this nose. But like side, the side profile isn't like, it's different, right? But I got this little dimple here I don't really like. Anyway, sure, guys smell good after a shower, writes involuntary eye roll. 
But I also appreciate how he smells after a workout or after a hard day at work. There's something very manly about that smell. Plus, it's a good excuse to shower together. Ooh, it's got a little bit X-rated. Um, there is this, okay, it's difference between B.O. though, okay? The, I think the smell she's she's alluding to is that outdoorsy, little bit of dusting sweat smell, right? There is that smell, and it is a good smell. It's like a manly smell. Okay, it does exist, but not B.O., like onions and shit. It's, and again, this person writes, it's the natural pheromones that men exude, and we do. Women exude pheromones when they're pregnant a lot and when they're ovulating, but men exude those pheromones when they work out. It's science. Pheromones are powerful as shit. You ever been around, like I've said this before, you ever been around someone you were never attracted to before, but for some reason you're like, oh my God, really? what's going on right now? <laughs> what? And you're super attracted to them? That's pheromones. I like graying hair. I also think s smile lines around a man's eyes are sexy as hell. I also like lanky men, but I'm not sure how negative anyone finds us. Smile lines. I think that's these, right? Smile lines. Okay, that little space between where the back of the jaw, neck, and below the ear area kind of converge. If a girl has a kissable spot like that, I'm super attracted. Yes. Absolutely agree to that. Undo. A girl with an awkward and bumbling personality. It's pretty damn cute. I agree. I don't know why, but I find left-handed women insanely attractive. It can maybe add three to four points to women's attractiveness for me. How do you know? That's weird. I like when a girl crosses her legs. I have no idea why, but sometimes I see my girlfriend playing League of Legends on her laptop and she's leaning against a sofa and her legs are crossed and her legs and her legs are long. Oh, picture's gone. Crossing legs, okay. My friends think I'm weird for this one, but I find it incredibly sexy when a guy has pronounced veins on his arms. Like, I have no idea why I find this sexy. I know a lot of women who love this. Like veins. Like veiny guys. It means it's masculine. It's very masculine, that's why. The lady at the blood donor clinic always appreciates my veins. <laughs> oh, here we go. This is my person. Men with a soft stomach. I don't find six packs that attractive. Praise be to you. I love a big soft belly and broad shoulders because it's not it fit because I fit nicely in them Is this a thing like I know everybody talks about dad bods and you can go get my shirt I love dad bods really good shirt on teespring, but is this true? Thumbs up in the chat right now You like dad bods for real or would you prefer so thumbs up for dad bods or throw up uh, King Sam if you like abs? I want to see I want to see Because I'm pretty sure everybody's gonna say abs if I already like someone I like them way harder when they are really busy what? That's weird. She totally didn't return my text. Boner. <laughs> That's awesome. This could explain why my girlfriend never leaves me alone when I'm trying to get some shit done. <laughs> I think it probably means something that they love doing, like a, a hobby or something they're really, really passionate about. Legs, big, meaty haunches. I'm a heterosexual girl, just in case anyone's wondering who this applies to. Engaged now, but would never date a man with skinny shanks. Just can't do it. Take their pants off and I'm totally skeeved out. First time I saw my fiance with pants, how you doing? <laughs> saw the product of years of cycling and nearly drooled myself into oblivion. He knows all he has to do is flex his quads and put my hand on them and it's it's his for the night. Woo! Hot! As a guy with huge legs, I appreciate this. I have huge legs because I was huge. I was fat for like most of my life. And then when I lost the weight, my legs did not lose any shape. They're massive trunks. I don't know. I'm just asked my wife that. Gary! Wife, I have questions. What do you need? All right. I'm doing a Reddit thread about weird things. I think it's like, what is a weird thing about the opposite sex that you that's attractive to you? Okay. And someone said they love guys with big ass legs. Is that something that attracts me to you to me like thunder guys yeah like big beefy ass legs on guys i don't know not necessarily for me well geez what was it what was it that you were like i like this guy because it wasn't my abs clearly it was your biceps biceps okay i'll take it my biceps i'll take it so then the question is you're single again all right fell off a cliff and died what is a weird thing you find attractive about somebody? A weird thing or the thing? A weird thing. And then the thing. We'll do the weird thing first. The fit of their pants. If their pants fit right, then they clearly take care of themselves. And if they don't, it's weird. Did you just admit that you like guys' asses? So what is the thing? Is it guys' asses? No, it's guys that know how to take care of themselves. I'm not going to take care of them. <laughs> So our whole marriage is a sham, basically. <laughs> Clearly I settled. <laughs> wow, that's nice. Terrible. You're a terrible person. But I love you. Bye. Love you too. This one says lower back dimples, which I completely... This isn't a weird thing. This is straight up sexy. Back dimples are hot AF. This guy writes, it's a guy. 
He says, I'm a guy that has lower back dimples. Had a girlfriend a while ago that was in love with them. So much so that she would lay me on my stomach, fill my lower back dimples with water, then suck the water from them. Effing strange, but I loved her to death, so I let it happen. Okay. That's weird. Called Dimples of Venus, apparently. Hairy chests on guys. I, sh I, I trim with my Manscaped tool. Love a big scruffy beard on a dude. Woo, keep them beards coming. They love that. Okay, so that, I think it was pretty cool. You find out my wife likes guys with nice asses. That's fine, I don't have an ass. So our whole marriage is built on a lie. I literally have no ass. You wanna see my ass? Yeah. This tiny little bump. That's not an ass. So my wife just revealed to me that she settled. <laughs> just kidding, okay. What is the thing that I like that I find that weirdly attracts me to women? Let me tell you. Let's get some music on, please. The way she walks. There's something about a perfect stride that gets me. I don't know how to explain it, but if you have a weird stride, I can't. I, can't. I think Kathy is good because she's a, she was a figure skater. She's got a good stride, um, but I can't do weird walks. No, it's if you have a perfect stride, the way that you walk is like booms. Not even like I'm not talking about a runway model. I'm just talking about a good stride. Yeah. Hey, what's up? What's up? That's me. Everybody take a deep effing breath. It has been a good video today. Whoo, happy freaking Friday. I'm so excited we got to do this today. There's a lot to talk about. We got, man, those people pissed me off, but then we got some good stuff. What is something that you love that is weird or you think is weird? Cause it's generally probably not weird. Probably a lot of people love that same thing, but it's just something different, right? And it's definitely not feet. Cause that's gross. It's disgusting. Or raisins. If you eat raisins, no, we're not friends. Anyway, everybody, I think that you're amazing. I think that you're valuable and I think that you should think that too because you are and I hope that you have an incredible Friday. You look amazing. I hope all your travels are going really well. The kids aren't being a bunch of a-holes. Okay. I hope that everything is just boom, peachy king. Go get yourself some Chick-fil-A nugs today. They're so good. And I will see you tomorrow.